Alright guys, let's take a look at how you can create a simple stick figure animation like this one. Ever wanted to create those viral stick figure animations but have zero drawing skills? Well, buckle up, because I'm about to show you how to do it. No art degree required. And if you're anything like me, you've probably watched a ton of these videos eagerly thinking, this is it. I'm about to become the Picasso of stick figures. Then, bam. They all end up using Adobe Express, and let's be real, the results are, uh, less than impressive. Not to mention those videos get fewer views than a potato peeling tutorial. But fear not. I've spent several coffee-fueled nights cracking the code for us non-artists. And guess what? It's not rocket science. In fact, my first attempt wasn't half bad, and I can confidently say it was made without shedding a single tear. And here's the kicker. You don't have to dip into your savings to make these animations. You don't even need to know how to draw. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to create viral stick animations. So stick around, pun totally intended, and don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons if you find this helpful. Just a heads up though, this isn't some magical one-click process. It's gonna take a little effort, so let's dive in. First things first, you need an idea. Now sure, you could ask ChatGPT for a script, but trust me, the goldmine of humor in these animations comes from your own brain. Watch a few viral animations to get the juices flowing. Some of these creators are literally making videos about a stick figure tripping over its own foot, and people can't get enough. Once your genius idea strikes, it's time to script it out. Don't overthink it, keep it fun, short, and punchy. After that, head over to a text-to-speech tool for the voiceover. I personally recommend Eleven Labs. Their voices are very realistic, and they give you 10,000 free characters monthly. Just slap that script in there, pick a voice you like, maybe one that sounds a little dramatic for comedic effect, and boom, voiceover done. Now comes the fun part, creating the animation itself. Don't panic if your drawing skills peaked in kindergarten. I'm in the same boat, so I'll be showing you a few tricks. We're going to use an app called Krita. It's open source, and you can run it on your phone, tablet, or PC. Next, we need to set the scene. For this demo, I'll create something super simple. A living room with a couch and maybe a fridge. Here's the thing. I don't know how to draw a couch, but here's the hack. Instead of sketching from scratch, we're going to find a basic line drawing online. Head over to your favorite free vector website and search for sofa line drawing. The key is finding images that are simple enough for our stick figure vibe. Some images are paid, so don't forget to filter by free ones. Pick something you like and download it. Alright, you've got your vector file, but we need a PNG format, so let's head over to PhotoP. It's like a free version of Photoshop. Go ahead, import your vector file. Notice how it doesn't have a background layer? That's perfect. No need to mess with anything here, just export it as a PNG and boom, we've got our sofa ready to go. Next up, let's grab our fridge. Same process. Search, download, and as you'll see, this one has a colored background. We're not about that life, so we're importing this into PhotoP as well. Now here's the fun part. Turn off that pesky background layer. And while you're at it, feel free to play around with the colors. Want to make the shadow a funky color or remove it completely? Go wild. Once everything's looking good, export your fridge as a PNG and you're ready to move on. Now time to fire up Krita. We're creating a new document with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, a nice standard size for animations. First things first, let's set up the room. Don't worry, it's way easier than it sounds. Grab the rectangle tool and set the size to something reasonable. Draw out your rectangle, then switch tools to draw two simple lines for the walls. Finally, we'll use the polygon tool to add a door on one side. See? Easy peasy. But wait, we're not done yet. Time to add some color. Select the paint bucket tool, choose your favorite shade, and click to fill in the areas. Once that's looking good, we can bring in our sofa and fridge. Drag and drop the sofa in, resize it to fit the room, and feel free to change up the color if you're feeling creative. Do the same for the fridge. Before you know it, the scene's already starting to look pretty good. Now comes the fun part, creating our character. Look, I'll be honest, my stick figure drawing skills leave a lot to be desired, so we're taking a shortcut. Head over to Vectezi, where you'll find tons of stick figure options. For this demo, we're going to use a slightly modified version of one of Rico Animation's characters. Don't worry, I'll drop all the assets including these images in the resource channel of my Discord server. The link's in the description and also on my channel page. Want to give your stick figure a bit of flair? You can totally add some clothes. Just grab a simple outfit from our trusty image sources, drop it onto the character, and adjust it to fit. We'll use the brush tool to blend the legs into the pants. It's already looking good. Want to go the extra mile? You can add a bow tie, maybe throw in some funky colors and make it your own. For this demo though, we're going to keep things simple. No clothes. I'll add a splash of color to the stick figure and remove the arms and legs. Don't worry, we'll add them back later when we're ready to animate. But for now, removing them will save us a lot of erasing and redrawing when we're repositioning the character. Now, it's time for the big moment, animating. Switch over to the animation window in Krita. Once you're there, 
Right-click and add a new frame. Alright, quick disclaimer. I'm no animation expert. In fact, this is my very first attempt at creating these kinds of animations. So don't be afraid to play around with the features in the app. Experimentation is key. If I can do this, trust me, you can too. Now, when it comes to creating a new frame for your character, it's as simple as duplicating the previous one and shifting things around a bit. Watch as I switch between these frames, you'll see the subtle differences that bring our little stick figure to life. Pro tip, turn on the onion skin feature. Sounds fancy, but all it does is show you the previous and upcoming frames, making it way easier to draw the next part. But since I'm no Van Gogh, I'll be using some clever tricks to get the job done. I want the character to look like he's entering from behind the wall. His full body won't be showing yet, so I'll move the character's frame forward. To save myself some time and headaches, I've already made images of the feet and legs. I'll grab the foot first, drag it into the scene, and position it so it looks like the character is just entering. For the first frame, I'll duplicate it, erase part of it, and voila! It now looks like our character is stepping into the room from outside. In the next frame, we'll move that foot forward just a bit, bring in the leg image, and adjust the position. But here's a trick. Since we don't want the leg visible in the first frame, we'll simply erase it. As you can see, the leg's a little long here, so we'll duplicate the frame and clean it up. Then we'll do the same with the arm, bringing it in so it pops into view. Easy, right? Now for the head. We want it to gradually appear as if our character is peeking in. I'll go to the character layer, drag the frame back to where we want the head reveal to start, and slowly duplicate and reposition it to make it look like the head is creeping in. Using the onion skin will help you position things more smoothly. Once that's done, we'll start moving the hands as well. We don't stop there. Let's shift the eyes a little too. I'll erase the old eyes and draw new ones with the brush tool. Just make sure you've got the right size and color, then click where you want the eyes to go. As you can see, you don't need to be a master artist to create something cool. We're just repositioning and erasing things here and there. As we move forward, we'll continue adjusting the character's body, arms, and legs. And to make it look like our character is bending their knee? Simple. Just shorten the leg, reposition it, and use the brush tool to connect the dots. Easy as that. Alright, time to speed things up a bit as we finish up the movement. Now, let's tackle the next challenge. How to make our stick figure speak. I tried creating some lip movement myself, and honestly, the result wasn't half bad. But we need something a bit more presentable. So I went ahead and created a few different versions of the character with various lip movement styles. Let's import the first one. We only need the mouth here, so let's clean up the rest. Once that's done, we'll reposition the mouth and align it with the character. Since we only want this particular lip movement to last a few frames, we'll adjust the duration here. Now we'll repeat the process with the other lip movement styles I created. And check it out. The result actually looks pretty decent. For a first attempt at animating lip movement, this could almost pass as a good animation. So if you're sitting there thinking you can't do this, trust me, if I can do it, anyone can. Now if you want to add a voiceover to your animation, it's super easy. Just hit this button, upload your file, and boom! instant voiceover. All right, guys, let's take a look at how you can create a simple stick figure anime. However, there's one tiny issue with this tool. There's not a lot of flexibility when it comes to editing or repositioning the voiceover within the animation itself. My recommendation? Use this tool to do the animation, and then jump over to something like CapCut to add and fine-tune your voiceover. If you need to change the length of your animation, you can tweak the frames per second and the duration right here. Once you're happy with everything, it's time to render the animation. Just go over here and hit Render Animation, choose Export as Video, and select your preferred file format. Hit this button and voila, your animation is ready. Now if you're curious about how I built this faceless channel, make sure to check out this video where I go over everything you need to create a monetizable faceless channel.